I've always been drawn to nonfiction adventure stories that read like novels, uh, books that have you wondering how the hell the author could have possibly known all of this. Um, and that's what I aspired to do with Madhouse. But of course, with nonfiction, you can't make anything up. Uh, there's no magic trick. Every detail, every bit of dialogue has to come directly from a primary source or you're cheating. Uh, so once I decided I wanted to write about the Belgica, I set out to find as many firsthand accounts as I could, uh, diaries, logbooks, journals. I was very fortunate in that of the 19 men who left South America aboard the Belgica and arrived in Antarctica in the first few weeks of 1898, uh, about a dozen kept some kind of detailed account. And of those, all but one survived. So of course, the, the one that didn't survive is, is the one that I wish most to have read. Um, and that's a diary that was kept by a Norwegian sailor who went insane. And um, the reason it didn't survive is his shipmates burned it, presumably uh, in order to prevent posterity from seeing the horrors it contained. Um, the other thing I felt I had to do to tell the story was to visit Antarctica uh, myself to see the Gerlas Strait, this sublime stretch of the Antarctic Peninsula discovered by the uh, Belgic expedition with my own eyes. Uh, there's simply no way I could have captured the sights and sounds and smells of Antarctica by sitting at my desk. And um, I traveled there in December of 2018 and was just blown away uh, by by how just polychromatic it all was. I, I somehow assumed it would be rather... Uh, <laughs> black and white, just snow and sea, but it was just a, a spectrum of, of colors from the turquoise of the uh, icebergs to the, the bright scarlet of uh, the beaks of Gentoo penguins. Uh, 